let's go into some of the more new things. Um, there is no shredding of ballots going on. That's not real. It's not happening. Um, there's no there's shredding of envelopes that were the non-used ones, or there's also shredding of um, the secrecy envelopes that came through. We saw some of those in the Senate hearing, and it's obvious that they are the secrecy envelopes, which have no evidentiary value because there's no signature on it, there's no way to match it back, they're just, they're just basically trash. Um, the, the law requires you keep the signature and oath envelopes and the ballots themselves for 22 months. Those are all being kept. Um, let's see. This is what I don't fully understand. No one is changing parts or pieces out of Dominion voting machines. That is, that's, that's not a real, I don't even know what that means. It's not a real thing. Um, that's not happening. The president mentioned on the call yesterday or, or from two days ago. That's, again, not real. I don't even know how, how exactly to explain that. Um, let's see. Secretary Raffensperger does not have a brother named Ron Raffensperger. That is also not real. The president tweeted that, that out as well. Um, it's, let's see, got such a long list. Oh, yes, the other really fantastical thing we saw the other day was um, a p potential hacking of Dominion equipment during a Senate hearing last week. And that did not happen either. Let's go over a couple of reasons why. First of all, ballot marking devices and scanners, neither one have modems. It's very hard to hack things without modems. There's nothing to talk to. So let's get that clear. Um, the poll pads, which is a no-ink device, um, does have the ability to connect to Wi-Fi, which we use in it for loading purposes and in case there's an issue on election day, but they're not hooked up live all the time. And if they saw anything, they could see traffic back and forth, but it would basically be like watching a river go by, you couldn't get in. It's, it's essentially if they did this, which we have no proof of. We have claim after claim after claim with zero proof, zero. And signed affidavits are part of an evidentiary trail, but they have to be investigated. And let's remember, everybody who came and gave testimony, it was public comment, at the state senate hearing. This office was never asked to come and discuss those items with that state senate, here, state senate subcommittee. That didn't happen either, which I find interesting because obviously they're making wild claims that again undermine people's faith in the system. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, this is another one that came over the weekend from the former, from the founder of Overstock.com that they had found thousands and thousands of fake ballots in Fulton County Warehouse. For any of you all in the press who have been to the Fulton County Warehouse, these are the emergency ballots that have been sitting in that warehouse since before the November election, very much in plain view of everybody to see. And what happened, the reason they had a high number, first of all, every county has to have those emergency ballots by, by rule. The state election board rule says you have to have 10% of the available ones for each polling location, and they have to be printed for that polling location for the ballot style so they can track it properly. In Fulton County's case, y'all may remember that there was a COVID outbreak in their warehouse not long before the logic and accuracy testing period was happening for the general election. In a very wild abundance of caution. They had what they referred to as not plan A, not plan B, but they referred to it as plan C, which was if we can't get people in to do the logic and accuracy testing on all of our equipment, we're going to print up 100% of our ballots we need to let hand marker ballots be what we have to do if we cannot get the machines done. They did that out of an abundance of caution. Given the unknowable unknowns surrounding COVID and their ability to get employees in to do that, they were thankfully able to get the employees in. Dominion staff came in to help them make sure they got the logic and action test done. So they were able to deploy all of their BMDs and their BMD carriers and scanners. So they didn't have to use those ballots, but that's why those ballots existed. They are not fake ballots. They are real ballots. They are unused ballots. And what I find really interesting about this is they were in shrink wrapped items in boxes that are sealed what can you do with things? They're sitting right there. Everybody saw them. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what, what other, here's part of the problem, y'all. I, I sit down and try to write down everything that we see that comes over the internet as a, as a potential thing of disinformation. It gets exploded. We all look at these things. We know there's lots of bots that are doing it. We have foreign powers that are pushing some of these things at the same time. So here's the takeaway from all this. This office has been open and transparent. We are continuing investigations. There are questions about pristine ballots. That's one last thing, the pristine ballot thing. There are three reasons you can have the quote unquote pristine ballot, which is essentially the absentee slash emergency slash provisional ballot. There's first one, 
Military and overseas voters oftentimes will get what they call an electronic ballot. What happens is once we get the um, uh, ballot built, starting the 49th to the 45th day, we will send emails out to those people who, who want to have electronic ballot delivery, which is many of our military servicemen and women. So they take that, they print it, and they bubble in their choices. Now, obviously, that's on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper or 11 by 14 where they can print it on. So it's not sized properly to go through a scanner. So when that comes back to the county, they will duplicate that on a flat, unfolded piece of paper on the absentee ballot slash emergency ballot. That's a normal process for many of the military and overseas voters that are electronically delivered. The other situation you might see that in is an emergency ballot situation. If a ballot marking device goes down or wasn't used, which is the case we saw in the morning in Spalding County on election day, they will use the emergency ballots as backup. And those will just be scanned directly into the machine and not folded. And the, the, the final pl place you would see that is on a damaged or adjudicated ballot that was not adjudicated through the electronic system. Or in Fulton's case, what you saw was they were putting so many of the absentee ballots through their cutters that occasionally would catch the ballot itself and slice it. In Fulton County's case, they did the vast majority, I think 100% of their duplication on a BMD. In Cobb County's lo location, I think they did all those on hand-marked paper ballots. So there's a difference of use and processes within each one of the counties. So that's why you would see quote-unquote pristine ballots. Um, Wednesday, we've all heard the reports that there's going to be several senators and congressmen who will be objecting to the electors being seated. Um, we anticipate that each time they do that, they're going to go, they'll separate out, they'll have the debate for two hours. The state of Georgia's electors will get seated, they will look at this evidence as best they can in such a way, and it will be voted on by the House and Senate, and we anticipate that, and that will prove our certification was proper at the end of the day, and that we follow the process properly. And I, and I give you back to Senator Tom Cotton's statement from earlier today that says this is the process that we follow. This is the appropriate step under the Constitution of the laws of the state of Georgia and the laws of the United States. So with that, I want to say, if you're a Georgia voter, if you want your values reflected by your elected officials, I strongly beg and encourage you, go vote tomorrow. Do not let anybody discourage you. Do not self-suppress your own vote. Do not make a self-fulfilling prophecy out of doing this. Don't let anybody steal your vote that way. And that's what's happening. If you, if you self-suppress, you're you taking away your important voice from this election.